How's it going there, everyone? I am back. And so, as you can see by the title, yeah, so, when deep down inside of me, I think to myself, the reason why I have difficulty making friends and their number one reason why I am still single to this day at nearly 48 years of age is it's simple to say that I am just not good enough. I am not worthy enough and not good enough. So would that be an indication that it's probably time to uh, kick my therapy up an extra notch or two? Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. I think it's really time Maybe not just a couple of notches, but several notches. And so, it's hard to say whether depression causes loneliness or loneliness causes depression. I did come across a, a snippet on Google where it mentioned for every point increase in loneliness, there's an overall 16% increase in overall depressive symptoms. And then of course, there is this third variable that I've been experiencing, which is unemployment, but more so underemployment. So could the underemployment be contributing to my loneliness as well? Well, for sure, it's affecting my self-esteem and having a reduced self-esteem and self-confidence therefore makes me more avoidant, therefore contributing to more loneliness, thereby increasing my depression. And so all three factors, it's like there, there's a connection between all three of them. And so uh, someone commented, hiking is not enough. You need intensive therapy and medication. And I am going to have to agree, agree with that 110%. So, I mean, obviously, you know, the loneliness, the underemployment, has obviously kind of made it to where, my, to where I am openly admitting that I am in need of intensive therapy. And so, at 4.30 this afternoon, I'll have a 20 minute consult with the ketamine, uh, with the Seattle uh, ketamine clinic. And of course, I'm gonna be shopping around to see if I can find something that's maybe a little cheaper, but regardless, I think it's time for me to really start looking at highly intensive therapy treatments out there. And I may even consider going into an inpatient treatment facility. Yes, kicking it up to, kicking it up several notches to where I may even consider doing an inpatient treatment protocol. Because obviously loneliness is probably the biggest threat to my existence. It will eventually do me in. It will get to the point where I'll just ultimately check out. I mean, I, that's just a given. So 4.30 is my consultation. Kind of find out more about this ketamine infusion therapy. See what that's all about. And of course, I've been diagnosed with what's called depression. Persistent Depressive Disorder, uh, what else? Generalized Anxiety Disorder, Hypersomnia, the potential, they're kind of not sure about OCD, but they're mentioning there could be a little OCD involved, and maybe even some PTSD. And yeah, you've got like other things too, like there could be some body dysmorphic disorder going on too but regardless even though persistent depressive disorder is supposedly a milder form of depression that's not to say that you can have episodes of major depressive disorder and of course to be diagnosed with major depressive disorder you have to have it for like at least two weeks but I have noticed that days where I have like, where my symptoms flare up are becoming more frequent. They've become more frequent over the past few years. And once again, could that be tied to underemployment and increasing loneliness? It's hard to say. I mean, I guess that's kind of up to for, for a professional 
to figure out. But to whoever commented, hiking is not enough. They are, they are so, they are so right. Oh, so that's, so I did do my therapy session. I just got done with that about a half hour ago. And of course, out of respect, you know, you don't want to just call out and be like, oh, I don't want to do my session. So out of respect, I still did it. Because obviously they've got other patients to see. So it's like, it's not fair to other people if you cancel last minute when they could have seen someone else. Okay. So I am really, I am really looking forward to see what this ketamine infusion therapy is all about and what it can potentially do. And I guess if you're on medication, if you're already taking like an antidepressant, I guess the effects can be even more enhanced. But yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I tried my hardest to avoid medication, but I think it comes to a point where you just have to kind of give in. You have to just, Merlin, thank you for the donation, Merlin. Shout out to Merlin. Thank you for your donation, Merlin. Very much appreciated. Uh, so yeah, I think it's come to a point where I've kind of reached that breaking point where I am going to have to just go on medication. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how I want. That's where someone. I saw the person coming up and he was saying something like, get off of that phone. Luckily, I'm a little more calm right now. Otherwise, I probably would have said something like F you or something. <laughs> but it's like, I'm looking ahead while well, I'm looking at my phone. It's like, but I'm saying, see, stuff like that, whenever someone's kind of like, rude to me on the trail because I am irritable and I've got like a bunch of emotion going through me there is a potential for you know at least a verbal altercation if not the potential risk for a physical altercation and I'm just being honest because I feel like most people who have a lot of friends who are in a relationship still feel the need to be a douche, to be a douchebag. Uh, people, when they have a lot of things, always prior trails and they stick to really remote trails and this kind of trails and this kind of avoid. I might just become a completely, see, I can almost completely get myself away from the triggers of my depression. Ugh. Yeah, so I know it's kind of a little session. It's like it's not having the energy to get up and do things or a lot of pleasure. Uh, it, can it can make you have a negative perception of yourself, which who knows if that's tied into whether that can cause any form of uh, body dysmorphic disorder. So that's the thing with mental health. It is so intertwined that that's probably why it's hard to come up with like an effective treatment that can treat multiple people. They will, they will come out with a cure for cancer long before they come up with a cure for mental illness. Although that would be a dream if they ever did come up with a cure for mental illness. But I think, I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime, a cure for mental illness. A cure for cancer will have been found long, long before any cure for mental illness. So like, yeah, what kind of intensive therapies are out there? Well, you have, obviously you got ketamine therapy, which I just discovered a few days ago. You have neurofeedback training. You got EMDR. Uh, you've got like dialectical therapy. Let's see, exposure and response therapy. Uh, what else is there? Psychoanalytical therapy, uh, lifespan therapy. I mean, there's all different kinds of therapy out there. And then, of course, you've got inpatient treatment, or you've got like a combination of like inpatient, outpatient treatment. 
there's all different combinations when it comes to therapy. Uh, but regardless, the loneliness is eventually gonna, it's probably already made me start to, I think it's already start to make me break is what it's done. And so that's kind of why you will notice that in a lot of my recent live streams, you can kind of see like, you can kind of sense the despair, a little bit of anger and frustration and sadness because yeah, I think the loneliness is finally starting to make me crack. And so that's kind of why it's like, okay, I need to kind of like get on some intensive therapy pretty quick or get on some medication or something. Because yeah, like I mentioned, if there's one thing that's gonna lead me to my demise, it's not gonna be cancer. It's not gonna be an accident. It's more likely gonna be loneliness and just me just simply wanting to check out, you know, check out of here. And so then there's this whole argument, well, that would be really shellfish and not have, and it's kind of like, well, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I would say that loneliness does lead people to want to check out. I mean, it is, I mean, it's probably, I'm sure it's a major contributing factor out there as to why people just decide they've had enough with life. And it's like, we were genetically wired to be social creatures. I mean, we, we want social interaction. We're, we are meant to find, you know, supposedly, you know, it's taught, you know, society teaches us that we will find our romantic partner in life and so forth. But maybe we're in a day, maybe we're in a day and age where we're trying to simply just defy what tens of thousands of years of genetic imprinting instills in us and then all of a sudden be like well we have to somehow defy the genetic code and be like well can we survive being lonely can we survive just being single so maybe that's probably why there's so much chaos in this world today is because we're probably trying to defy tens of thousands of years of evolution and then just try to change that pretty much like overnight and so that's why there's so much chaos in the world today with loneliness and increasing mental illness, substance abuse. And I mean, just look at, look at driving these days, road rage. Look at the incidences of road rage. I mean, and then look at this, look at all this needless violence that's happening. You read on the news, it's like, oh, there, yeah, another this, another that. Oh, it's, 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 it's really, yeah, it's really. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, hey, hey, Laura, Laura, Merlin, hey, Resilient Soul, thank you, Resilient Soul, and Merlin, thank you for the donation, but yeah, uh, so that was a lot that I kind of just spit out on that first lap there, okay, I got it. I'm gonna face up the channel again. Oh, jeez. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I know. I am only one person out of probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people experiencing loneliness. I'm just simply documenting how it affects me and my experience with it. And I'm sure people are going to have similar experiences with it and I'll probably have, you know, some similarities. But one thing's for sure, obviously chronic loneliness is not going to improve your mental health. It's going to, if anything, it's going to make it worse. I mean, that's a given. But then there's like that third variable, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, underemployment. And of course, underemployment, working jobs that you're way overqualified for, underpaid, no opportunities for advancement, kind of like dead end, kind of like wondering like what your purpose is. So that can contribute to, you know, lack of self-esteem. And that too can contribute to loneliness because you're in like a lone, that places you like in a lonely part of the social economic status ladder per se. I mean, so yeah, it's, 
it's it's been it's been yeah i mean unfortunately my 40s are going to be almost 48 years old and now i've got two years left but in the grand scheme of things my 40s have pretty much been a complete bust if there was a theme to my 40s it would be depression and loneliness that would be the theme of my 40s so with that being said that's why this afternoon marks the beginning of finding the entryway into beginning some intensive therapy and it might cost me it might cost me it might cost me a few grand uh, it might cost but i look at that as an investment i look at investing in my mental health as an investment and potentially a lifesaver I see it as uh, I see it as two things. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm doing it. I mean, it's like oh, I could save up, I could save all my money up over the winter months and get myself a new road bike. Oh, how I would, you know how I've been wanting to get a new road bike, carbon fiber. But what's going to keep me living longer? A road bike's not going to keep me living longer. A road bike's not going to help me get more confidence. Therapy will, intensive therapy. So that is probably going to be the sacrifice I make is sacrificing that much wanted new road bike for intensive therapy. And I will be documenting my journey. And hopefully I will finally start to make some breakthrough. Because I know a lot of you have been following me a long time now. And you're just probably waiting for the day when I finally make a breakthrough. So that's kind of where it's like time to kick up that therapy up a few notches. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so with that being said, more than likely, well, I don't have to worry about being alone on Christmas because I'll be working Christmas Day. I'll be working Christmas Eve. I'll be working the day after Christmas. And the same thing with New Year's. So I won't be necessarily alone. I'll be working and I'll just be thinking back in my mind. I'm doing this because I'm going to help save up for intensive mental health treatment, intensive therapy. That will be my motivating factor because maybe it's hard to say, maybe my mental health could also be what's keeping me from being able to effectively network. Hey, cabin critters, enthusiasts. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for joining in. So, it'll be interesting. So, that's why I'm giving myself two years as a buffer zone. I figure by the time I'm 50, I should be ready, both skillfully and mentally, to take on and I start applying for data analyst jobs. If I find something sooner than that, that would be like a bonus. I would consider that a bonus. And I would probably go out there and buy the lotto because I would consider that a stroke of luck as well. So that's, that would definitely be, so I'm not gonna just like say, I'm gonna have to wait two years, but I'm just kind of giving myself that extra time cushion to kind of give myself plenty of room, wiggle room to work on my mental health, to, to get as advanced skills as possible and to kind of, I feel like so, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through some comments here. Ooh, yes. So I've got someone from, so I got, so let's see, Merlin, once again, thank you for your donation. Resilient soul. And thank you, resilient soul. I don't know if you're still on, but thank you for, Having joined in, uh, Laura, Laura, Suzanne Schultz, who else? And then there's someone in here. Uh, S, your house is amazing. You have a good sir. Oh yeah, and then bacon, oh, like bacon dolls is. Yes, bacon dolls. Uh, sharing that, you know, the excitement for me potentially trying out this ketamine therapy. Uh, 
Uh, so, Terry Saigand, bag carrying hotel. I'm not sure what that is all about, but <laughs> hey, Kate. Hey, thank you, Kate and Chris Camberis and Hinty Gibson. Whew. So, yes, I will be coming back at you guys again. Of course, not on the trail, but at home with a follow-up to what I find out with my initial consultation. I will be sharing kind of what the next steps are. Because, yeah, 4.30, that is a time. Woo! 4.30. Could this be the final, be I mean, could this finally be it? Could I finally be beginning the path to what I've been needing for a long time now? Intensive therapy. Intense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Royal Calvin. Uh, Royal Calvin. Loneliness is a social construct. Once you learn that nobody exists, it won't be so bad. That always makes me think of what's that, what's that called? Where it's like, we can only prove our own existence. We can't prove everyone else around us exists. I think that goes into solipsism. Solip, yeah. So, solipsism, I believe it's like, where it's like, once we, once we pass away, that's it. Everything else also goes with that. I don't know, that's solipsism. So in a sense, you are truly by yourself. Everything you see around you is actually just an illusion. Yeah, solip I believe that's called solipsism. Then, you know, then I can start going off into a, a rabbit hole and start talking about all these different theories of like what existence is, recurrence, eternal recurrence. Do we keep living the same life over and over again? Then you have reincarnation. Very, there's various kinds of reincarnation. Maybe we come back as the same person, but given the opportunity to make different decisions. Or maybe we come back as a different animal. And then you have, uh, when we die in this life, we simply just wake up in another life. So it's like we're kind of like in a series of dreams. So like when you're dreaming, if you die in your, if you die in your dream, you wake up. What if when we die in this life, we just simply wake up in a different life and so forth? Uh, what else is there? Uh, there's simulation theory. That's a big one. Then, of course, there's even like living in a simulation within a simulation. Uh, I mean, there, there's, and you've got, and then, of course, you've got so many like derivatives of like these theories that exist out there. So, I mean, I could, I could go into a complete tangent about that. That's, I'll save that for another, I'll save that for another time. Huh. Yeah, so. What do I hope to what do I hope to get from the ketamine experience? Ideally what I hope to get is at least some immediate uh, relief to at least take the edge off. To at least take the edge off the loneliness and depression. That's what I'm hoping for to get at first. Is to at least just take the edge off. That way it will make me more focused and I can be a little bit more productive because I have found that my depression is causing me to kind of lose a little bit of motivation. It has started to make me lose uh, some motivation. So I'm hoping the ketamine therapy will start to take the edge off and then kind of get me more, kind of get my mood more stabilized and hopefully help with the, you know, help with the loneliness too. That disparity, that uh, kind of that desperation. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for the immediate term. Yeah, so. Yeah, so Theo, yeah, I'll have to check that out uh, as far as like, and I'm going to be looking at some YouTube videos too, as far as like ketamine therapy and like what the outcomes and, but like I said, it's, everyone's probably going to have a different experience. Everybody's, you know, going to have, depending on their physiology, might have a different reaction. Obviously, some people uh, experience relief like within a few hours. Yeah, so, but the point is, I think once I get that first appointment officially set up, and I have to wait till I get my first paycheck to actually set up my first appointment. If I go this route, you know, obviously I'm gonna try to look for, but in the grand scheme of things, I shouldn't really be too worried about whether it's gonna eat up an entire paycheck, because like I said, it's an investment in my mental health. So I have the feeling once I set up my first appointment, 
I don't know if you guys get this, but let's say you have you have something that's bothering you, whether it's physical or mental. You schedule an appointment with your doctor. Do you do you ever get that feeling? All of a sudden, you feel a little bit better. You start feeling better, whether it's a physical ailment or a mental ailment. Knowing that you're going to see a doctor, you start to feel better. Well, I had the feeling that's going to what it's going to be like when I set up my first appointment for whatever uh, intense therapy I get is I'll immediately start feeling better because my mind already knows this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be going into this therapy. So it's like your mind starts, it kind of like prepares you and kind of like gives you that extra hope. It's like, okay, I know things are rough right now, but you've got that appointment coming up. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, so, <laughs> hey, John B. John B, yes, Woo, John B, let's see what time it is, I gotta see what time it is, because like I said, it's a, my appointment is at 4.30, it is 3.30 now, I've probably got time to do another lap, I can probably do another lap on the short trail, so I got someone coming up, alright, so yeah, I think it's 3.33 right now, it's only about a 10 minute drive, back to where I live. So yeah, I think I can do another lap. I'm gonna do another lap for you guys, but I, 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 might have to, I might have to pick up the pace here a little bit. But yeah, so that's kind of what's going on now. Ooh, yeah. Hey, John B. Greetings from, hey, John B coming in from the UK. Yeah, all right. I'm getting some, getting some, uh, some uh, viewers from overseas, Scotland, Scotland, UK, Scotland. Oh yeah, definitely getting some some action overseas. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's. And I think what made me, I think what made me just finally decide that hey, I'm gonna have to sacrifice, you know, get my get my a much needed toy, which of course if you're just joining in, guys. Uh, uh, I'm kind of talking about, you know, it's time for me to begin my journey and to get some intensive uh, mental health treatment therapy. And so I'm looking into this ketamine therapy. It is quite spendy, but it means I will have to probably give up, get myself a new, a much needed new road bike for next summer. I think having my mental health in check is far more important than a road bike. And having my mental health in check might make it easier for me to network and then I'll be able to go out there and get my dream job. So in the end, sometimes you gotta make sacrifices in life and mental health comes before any any kind of toy. Because as Anthony mentioned, hiking is not enough. Well, neither is cycling. Cycling is not enough. What I need is intensive therapy and medication. Whether that comes in the form of ketamine or weed or prescription medications whatever it is that's what needs to happen because like i said loneliness it's no loneliness is it's not much of a life being lonely it's not much of a life to really look forward to so so that's kind of that's kind of my logic and why I decided to just be like, you know, I'm just going to like bite the bullet, save up some money from my paychecks and get myself, start getting some intensive therapy. Intense, yes. Yeah, uh, and I know I made a post kind of asking like, will the intensive therapy be beneficial or not? And then I had like that third choice, depending on like the severity. Well, because I've been battling this for a long time now. So obviously the duration of this issue has been long term. And of course, severity, you know, I've been having more frequent flare ups. Yeah, I think it's time. I think it's safe to say that intensive therapy, I would be a candidate where it would be proven to be quite beneficial. Right. Yeah, so I am coming down to almost a parking lot and I'm going to be doing one more lap. I'm going to make it three laps. That's what I like about this short little loop. It just makes it super convenient. And usually I think the minimum I would do would be two laps. The maximum, well, depending on the day, I mean, I would just go up to the viewpoint. If I'm gonna do like more than, 
if I was going to do like four or more, I might as well just go all the way up to the viewpoint. But because I'm only doing three, I do that. Uh, give that, give that guy a kick. <laughs> Ellie. L-E-A, L-E-A, Oliver, oh, Oliver E, social anxiety, that could be, I mean, so that's the thing, I've been diagnosed with, I guess it's what's more generalized anxiety disorder, but I, I'm sure, that, I mean, I am sure I do have a certain amount of social anxiety, obviously, when it comes to doing live streams, or public speeches, or speaking in front of an audience, I don't necessarily have too much social anxiety, I think I have more social anxiety if I'm like meeting someone one-on-one -on -one or like a small or say like I'm meeting a small group of people or I'm going to a, a get-together and I don't know anyone there that's probably where I have the greatest amount of social anxiety and of course that can be an impediment too as far as networking making new friends and even dating so yeah so let's see I can see what time it is yeah I, I can do this in I can do this in 20 minutes. So yeah, here we go. I'm gonna go up one more time. One more loop, guys. Oh, one more loop and then I gotta call it a day. Cause then I've gotta make sure that I'm back for my Zoom meeting. All right, so I'm gonna make my way up one last time. One more loop, guys. So let's see. What do I want to say on this final jaunt and what I call the first crossing loop? Because up this road, there are three crossings at the main trail. And where I go into the trail is a first crossing. And then there's a second crossing and then a third crossing before I just continue on to where however high I want to go. Okay, so, yes. Woo. I'm gonna catch my breath here a little bit. I'm not going too hard, but like because I am chatting and kind of like constant uh, talking, I do find I get a little out of breath a little easier. So I'm just gonna try to catch up on some comments here. Oh, that's a cool little, I like that icon, L-E-A. I like that heart, oh, that was a cute little heart icon. Looks like a, it's a red heart. Looks like a, huh. yeah, that's a cool, that's a cool little uh, emoji there. That's the first time I've seen that one. Yeah, shy or shy, shelf. And then Terry Sai again is saying something about shy or self conscious, similar social anxiety. Yeah, that could be too. LEA, thank you. But yeah, Henty Gibson. Yeah, if you're still there, enjoy that Harry Potter and I'll keep you, I'll definitely keep you updated. All right. Caramoso. Caramoso. And Kane Clark. Yeah, Kane Clark. Yeah. Cool, I think I got it. I think I've mentioned everyone in here. Oliver E. Oliver E. Why it's light out? Actually, it's it's 3.30 p.m. where I'm at right now. So that's why it's still light out. <laughs> yeah. Oliver's, uh, it's funny, Oliver's like asking, why is it still light out? It's like 7 p.m. And it's not 7 p.m. here, it's 3.30. It will be dark in about an hour or so, <laughs> but it's not dark yet. So yeah, making my way doing one more final loop for a day, which makes a total of five for a day. And each loop is about 275 vertical feet of elevation gain. So highly convenient, but a mile, but a mile total. So yeah, not a bad way to quickly add up the elevation gain and just kind of provide a quick little break to whatever, you, to whatever I'm getting done. But once I start working, I will probably have to do this super early in the morning or after I get back late at night. And of course it'll be dark. But yeah, I'll just only do this short little loop here. All right. And the steepness of this, it's about, it averages, before I get to the, from the 
parking lot to the viewpoint, it averages about 12%. But actually, if you exclude the last two tenths of a mile, it's over 15% average gradient. With parts that are probably like 18 to 20%. Oh yeah. So yeah, the time is drawing near, guys. The time is getting near. 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hey, Merlin, thank you once again. Woo. Merlin, thank you for the donations, Merlin. Thank you, thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. So in case you're wondering, when I say, I should probably say, because I've got people from coming in from all over, I will say my appointment is at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. <sighs> Pacific Standard Time. I don't know if I would say it's elite level. No. When I was like, in my 30, when I was in 30 years old, I would say if I had kept up my physical fitness, uh, so at the age of 30, uh, my 5K times would be like under eight, I could run like a sub 18 minute 5K. Uh, 10K would be about 37 something. Sub three hour marathon and almost pushing like a three. I think my fastest 50K time was like three hours and 39 minutes. But if I, but then over that summer, I kind of lost interest and started to want to put size up, put a little size on me. Then I, I lost a lot of that fitness. But I think if I had continued on, based on what I've read, when I look at like the averages, based on my times and like my recovery rate, yeah, I was probably placed in like right, probably like right on the borderline of elite. I wouldn't say I was like elite level, but I was like borderline. So it's not to say that if I continue with this and treat, you know, eat better, you know, properly get some good sleep, get my mental health in order, I could at least be competitive in my age group. I could be highly competitive, you know, within my age bracket, which is a goal of mine. Forever a long guy. Forever a long guy. I'm sh and so that's the interesting thing. Loneliness is subjective. It is, it is a subjective feeling. So it would be hard for me to go up to say someone who seems like they're lonely but they're with their family or their friends and be like well he can't be as lonely as i am because i don't i'm not with anyone someone could be i mean i'm sure this happens this could be uh so someone could be you, you could still be with someone but yet you could be experiencing more loneliness than say someone that doesn't have anyone with them. Now it would be interesting. Now, do people who are by themselves, who don't have a partner in life, do they overall do they overall have more intense feelings of loneliness than say uh, people who are in a relationship? That you would have to probably do a survey, and then you would have to compare the two different samples and be like, okay, well it looks like based on the loneliness scale. Maybe people who don't have a partner in life would be overall more likely to experience more subjective loneliness. I guess that's one way you could probably figure, figure it out. But aside from that, it's really hard to say that, for instance, forever a lone guy mentions, do you ever feel lonely like I do? I don't know. I can't say that I feel lonely like you do because maybe you experience loneliness at a different level. And yeah. Getting a dog, it's not as simple as just go and get a dog. Getting a dog comes with responsibilities that I know I would not, that I am not ready for. Because when you get a dog, you gotta have people take care of it. If you go on a trip somewhere that, that doesn't allow dogs, I go to national parks pretty frequently. Dogs aren't allowed in national parks. So it's a huge responsibility. So it's not just as simple as like go go out there and get a dog. It's 
you got to consider you've got vet bills you got to feed you got to feed the animal you got to provide it with enough space to run around so it's it's not as simple as just go you know going and getting a going and getting out it's i would say owning a pet is probably almost just as much responsibility as raising a child <laughs> if you're if you're going to properly treat your pet you know the way it should be if you feel like you're if you feel like you don't want to have that responsibility of raising a child then probably getting getting a pet is probably not a good idea <laughs> ah. Ah. i wish they would come up with a way to like stop running those ah. okay all right cool merlin <laughs> yeah these are it ah i think those yeah i'm seeing some i'm seeing some interesting uh yeah gifs or emojis on here so i'm thinking those are like stickers i'm assuming that's what they are stickers or rocky rocky raccoon <laughs> rocky <laughs> that sounds familiar what do i know rocky raccoon is that like a cartoon I want to say, is that a cartoon or something? Oh, okay, well guys, okay, I know this is kind of like not having to do anything with the title of the video, but I'm gonna finish off this last part of this live stream talking about Rocky Raccoon. I don't know how many of you guys remember the days back like in the 70s and 80s, every Saturday morning, there would be like cartoons on. Saturday morning cartoons. Do you guys remember those days of just being able to wake up Saturday morning, tune into like your favorite local channel and watch like Bugs Bunny, uh, Popeye the Sailor Man, the Flintstones, Smurfs, Scooby-Doo, Snoopy, uh, Pixie and Dixie and Mr. Jinx. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Uh, Jabberjaw. <laughs> uh, there's, what other ones are? There's a, there's a host of other cartoons out there. But yeah, the good old Saturday morning cartoons. Those were the days when television was like, when television was actually like mood enhancing. I mean, television was funny. It was, it was like a good mood enhancement. Now it just seems like television is good at uh, pitting us against one another. Competition, who can outdo one another? Uh, name a few, Survivor, The Voice, The Masked Singer, uh, well, it's no longer on air, but Fear Factor was another one. Uh, Amazing Race. All these shows are all about competing with one another. Competition. Compete. Outdo better than the next person. So that's, I feel like the kind of, the, the shows that we have on nowadays, I think is also a potential contributing factor to the increasing amount of loneliness. So this is kind of goes back to like, Oh yeah, so what I like, uh, game shows, you had like other different game shows, you had like Tic-Tac-Toe, Joker's Wild, uh, let's see, what else was there, uh, uh, there's some other ones, uh, what, uh, make a deal, let's make a deal, Family Feud, uh, Press Your Luck, uh, let's see, there's, uh, I can't wait, so, uh, Scrabble I think was another one, uh, there was, there was a, a lot of, so you had like, your game shows in the morning and then of course they would be followed up by soap operas <laughs> but <laughs> i don't watch those so yeah I just, and then like what were some what were some popular tv shows back then oh there was a show called riptide uh equalizer uh quincy i don't know if you guys i don't know if you guys have ever heard that one quincy uh, the medical examiner that would try to solve uh crimes that was a, i like that one quincy medical doctor let's see what else was it? Oh, I just, not what I try to do. I just try to find all those, look up all those videos either on YouTube or on Amazon or something. Yeah, John B. Yeah, it, it, it's about sunset now, but I am kind of getting down to the parking lot, close to the parking lot, as far as like wild animals. Dusk and dawn. They say that is the most, that's like the time to when cougars, you know, start coming like, yeah, I mean, I guess they start looking for their prayer or whatever it is. But yeah, they say more than likely if you're going to encounter a cougar, it would be, between, you know, during dusk or dawn. And yep, 
we are approaching that time where it's about to be dusk. Oh yeah. Dusk and dawn. If you're ever by yourself and you want to go for a hike or a run, yeah, well, if you got any fear of those big kitty cats that weigh, you know, anywhere from 80 to 150 pounds or more, otherwise known as pumas, mountain lions, cougars, yeah, you probably may want to avoid any time that's around dusk or dawn. And of course, here I am running down the trail. So of course, I would be looking like prey because I'm actually running at around dusk. Oh yeah, doesn't that just seem like what could possibly go wrong? So with that being said, I do check my six. I look up in the trees to see if there's any cat that might be like laying on a branch that might be ready to pounce. So you look ahead, yeah. Cause yeah, they could be oftentimes, sometimes too, you won't be able to see them and it'll just like pounce on you. So yeah, and so, but like, I, like I, am, I am pretty close to the parking lot. Like I can actually see, I can, I can actually start to see the parking lot now. And, so, and of course I'm no longer by myself. I guess, oh, I thought they were coming up. But, uh, but yeah, see the parking lot down that way. Right. Ooh, yeah. So uh, as I'm nearing down the parking lot, I think this is a good time for me to say, thank you for joining in on this live stream because once I get down to the parking lot, it is gonna start cutting out on me. I had that issue when I made my earlier live stream. It just kept cutting in and out on me, uh, the coverage. So, one last time, I was gonna say, make sure. Yeah, Jerry Parks, please don't be dinner. Uh, Laura, Laura, I don't carry spray unless I'm actually like on a hike, like a slow hike. When I'm running, I kind of just take my chances, unless I'm going somewhere super remote. If I'm like, say I wanted to jog up to the top, like all the way five miles up, then I would carry my bear spray in my pocket. But because I'm really close by, I don't really feel a need to, but if I were going something much higher up, yeah, then I'd probably carry some spray. Okay, so don't mess with the cougar. Let's see, John B. <laughs> Ken. Ken, looks like, yeah, Ken mentioning something about losing connection. Yeah, that's gonna happen as I enter the parking lot. I always seem to lose connection right in the parking lot. So that's kind of why I'm saying, uh, I'm gonna kind of say my gut. I like that uh, emoji there. Looks like the wide open eye with one shut. That's a cute little sticker. Uh, Ken, yeah. Yeah, this is an iPhone, surprisingly, this is an iPhone 12, uh, Pro Max, but I guess they now have the iPhone 14 or something, but I don't know. I think my next phone might be either an Android or maybe the Google phone. I don't know yet, but that's, I'm not worried about that right now, but yeah, here it is. I'm entering the parking lot and some loose dogs. So, well guys, sometimes dogs can get a little sketchy when I've got a dog coming up here. Yeah. Actually, you know what's kind of funny guys is someone's loose dog than I am of like running into a cougar. I don't know what that is. I, that's just kind of like a funny quirk about me, but sometimes I can be more afraid of a dog than a cougar. Yeah, see, I've got dogs kind of like charging, uh, charging at me. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of calmly walk past the dog here. <laughs> don't own any stocks. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ready to go that route quite yet. So no stocks for me, but yeah. Thank you. Shout out to Jerry Parks, Laura Laura, Royal Calvin, Merlin. Thank you once again for your donations, John B. And to anyone else that I might have missed. But yeah, I think it's time for me to get going and I'll keep I'll let you guys know how my appointment nice and safe, guys. Wasn't on the menu. At least I wasn't on the menu today. But who knows what <laughs> I didn't see that, but alright. Take care. I'll see you.